You want hoops? Oh, we've got hoops for you in downtown Cleveland today. Welcome to the Mid-American Conference Tournament. Our initial game of the four today. The number one seed, Toledo Rockets, will tangle with the eighth seed, the Golden Flashes of Kent State. Uh, speaking of, take a look at uh, these two outstanding programs hoping to find a way into the national tournament. Both the Kent State Golden Flashes and the Toledo Rockets uh, come in here knowing, I mean, you know, it's first of three days, but you bet win in the quarterfinals if you're looking for an opportunity to move on. Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse is the site long the home of the Mid-American Conference Tournament. We take a look at our brackets. All you need to know right now, Toledo, Kent State, one versus eight. Uh, they will need to win today to advance to the semifinals here on Friday. So good to have you along, everybody. Welcome to downtown Cleveland. Mac Turner, Michael Regai, my partner, Rhett Boyd. When you look at these two basketball teams, pair of juniors, both from the state of Ohio, both recruited by their programs, Mott Cameron Davis for Kent State, Raheem Moss for Toledo, they're going to have to bring the way and set the pace for their squads. Uh, without question, and I think when you look at Kent State and Von Cameron Davis, here's a guy that really fits what Kent State's all about. It's physicality and the ability to play with force on both ends of the floor. Comes in averaging 13 points a game, but his best games have been in conference play. One of them against this Toledo Rocket basketball team just six days ago, where he poured in 20 on that night. He's going to do so here this afternoon. And for Toledo, Raheem Moss, a single-digit score a season ago of four Toledo comes into this season averaging just under 16 points a game. A big reason why Toledo is in the number one slot in the Mid-American Conference. The ability to attack downhill, get to the rim, get to the free throw line has been critical to their success and will need to be here this afternoon. Everything you need to know is right there for you as we get set to go. It is the first of our four Mac quarterfinals today. Toledo beat Kent State twice, once by 14 in January at Kent State at home. Just, what, six days ago, last Friday, a victory by 15. Settle back and enjoy, everybody. Time for us to take you to the hoop all afternoon long here on ESPN. Kent State just in their goal, going strong with that left hand. It's Von Cameron Davis, the young man we just discussed as you take a look at Kent State starting five. Davis averaged better than 13 points and close to five boards, and I would say he's a go-to guy uh, along the block. That first triple try of the afternoon isn't going to fall as Tyler Cochran had that stick in the flange, and the basketball will go to Kent State. Take a look at Rob Senderoff, uh, a, a no stranger to this MAC tournament and success in the MAC tournament for Senderoff. 13th season all time winning this coach. And not bad as uh, the Rockets got exactly what they wanted there is coming off that inbound. Dr. Maddox came up a tight curl. Great elevation on the jump shot on the baseline. For Ron Hornbeek, that left-handed jump hook, young man from Toledo, that plays for Kent State, Hornbeek. So the Toledo Rockets, very proficient offense, average better than 80 points a game. Shot 48% for the floor, hit 38% of their threes. This is Raheem Moss, who had to give it up. on well, that left-handed triple and book that for... Javen Simmons and uh, Todd, as you were telling me before, this young man who averaged better than 12 a game played 30 minutes a night. Just a redshirt freshman, it's earned a, the earned the trust of Dr. Walter. Oh yeah, he, he really developed in the course of the year. He had to sit out. Really developed a practice played against Cedric Miller, JT Shoemate, AJ Adu. And all he did is stepped in. You said it. A dozen points of ball game. Doesn't shoot the three very much. But that's only his eighth main triple of the season. That's ripped away by Dante Maddox. Maddox is going to launch to firm on that triple try. Offensive board, second chance opportunities for the Toledo Rockets. Rockets very good uh, on the glass this year. Moss is going to get to the free throw line. Well, and that's what Raheem Moss could give you, this six foot four inch junior. 
What do you have as our uh, keys in this one uh, in our first game of the quarterfinals, Red? For Kent State, it, it's got to be paint touches, whether it's with post entry or with the dribble. They went to Mount Cameron Davis in the first possession, had success, went to Hornbeek as well. They got to beat up the interior of Toledo's defense, soften them up. Defend without fouling. In the two games they played, Toledo has gotten to the free throw line 53 times, knocking down 44 of a Reem Moss, knocking down the first one here. For Toledo, attack downhill. That is their strength. Put the ball on the floor, finish at the rim, create for teammates with kickouts and extra passes. It allows them to get to the free throw line and gap control. Make, sense, make Kent State, excuse me, a perimeter-oriented basketball team and protect the paint and not allow them to attack your interior, which will create inside-outside balance. A couple of makes for Raheem Moss, who shot it at 75% from the line on the year. Just underway, great to have you along on ESPN out of downtown Cleveland and Rockin' Mortgage Fieldhouse. Toledo by five in the early going and as we said they will beat Kent State twice this year one in early January by 14 and uh, then at home just last Friday by 15 now firing that triple not going to go down for Kent State as uh, that was Mike Bakelja Bakelja the young man from uh, Solon here at Ohio started his career at Duquesne Toledo looking to add to their lead. Wilson came off that curl and went back rim with that jumper. Well, Sonny Wilson, we'll tell you a lot about him. This very talented six foot one inch freshman who doesn't happen often in Dr. Walsh's program, but worked his way into the starting rotation and plays 28 minutes a night. That's his Von Cameron Davis. Whirling in the paint and got that to go down. And it's the second time now. Two paint touches for my Cameron Davis. Four points. Sorry, at 20. Six days to go against Sudo. A little bit from the perimeter. Got the ball inside as well. Got to the free throw line. He's got to be a staple in their attack here this afternoon. Well, no question. Versatile offensive performer, too. Uh, maybe their best. The six foot five redshirt junior. Cochran thought about it. Got to get it in the air. Shot clock and one. That's going to be a 30-second shot clock violation. It's good defense here by Kent State. Cochran invited the double team, looking to skip skip the ball across the floor. Kent State did a good job of rotating and covering up to induce the turnover. Tyler Cochran, the 6-2 junior. Looks like he could put the helmet pads on and uh, be a... Uh, one of the uh, the linebacking crew for uh, the Rockets. It was an outside linebacker written all over it. Yeah, how about that runner in the paint? That's right there for Jalen Sullinger, young man from Columbus, the five foot ten inch junior, top scorer on this Kent State program, better than fifteen a night. Yeah, Showed you some of his arsenal there. Split the defense there, and again, Kent State doing what they need to do is attacking the interior early. There's the frost we talked about, Sonny Wilson. Basketball is going to stay initially with Toledo, but we'll see. It might be changed. It is changed, as Chris Beaver, the lead official today, tells us. All right, just getting going. Good to have you along. Toledo by one early, first quarter final in the MAC tournament. Downtown Cleveland Day on the inside. The music is great. Energy's great. Emotion's great. Basketball's going to be great, too. As you take a look at Todd Kowalczyk. All that man has done now in his 14th year as the, the mastermind of the Toledo Rockets basketball. Four consecutive MAC regular season titles. First current MAC member to win three in a row. He's won four in a row now. And of course, uh, looking to add the uh, MAC tournament championship to it as well. A lot of work to be done the next three days, but Toledo is certainly capable. Yeah, and added to that, this, this is now six 20-win seasons in the last seven, eight of the last 11. Just a thorough program through and through, year in and year out. He's got Andre Lorenzen on the floor trying to deal with this man, Von Cameron Davis. That's a tough ask. Von Cameron Davis using that uh, superior strength to his. He's got it going on early for Kent State. Six of the first eight. We highlight him in the open. His ability to play with force is showing here early here in the first half. Yeah, absolutely. 
all about the muscle game for Von Cameron Davis. And uh, this foul is going to go on Kent State. They got Ron Hornby got a hold inside to Javen Simmons trying to post. It's Magnus Entheman, the 6'8 sophomore out of Columbus. Doesn't get a lot of playing time. Only played six minutes a game during this regular season. Lorenzen, what is a tough jumper. Tried to go over the top of Von Cameron Davis. Didn't work. They couldn't get his shoulder square and elevate. Santiago loves to fire the three. Stepping out, Von Cameron Davis. Davis said, I've done yeoman's work in the paint three times. Let me step out and get something going from triple uh, land. Couldn't drop for him. See what Toledo gets offensively. Basketball on the deck. They turn it over as Mike but Kelja came up with a rip away. Turnover Rockets. And St. Louis lost the handle. Kent State gets the basketball because the Kelts will get on the floor after it. Winning the 50 50 ball there. Jalen Sullinger. Well, that's a deep triple. He can stroke that, folks. Shooting it from the Mac logo there, the offensive end. Well, him and Dante Maddox have parking lot range in this ballgame, so that is not a surprise for either fan base to see the deep three. Count that. Going strong to the hole. Speaking of Dante Maddox. Young junior out of Chicago. We're gonna put it on the deck and go strong to the rim with the Sullinger foul. Well, he took a he took a body from Sullinger at first, but you seen the strength to be able to hold off the contact and then explode through Sullinger, who got him on the wrist going up as well. Dante Maddox, 15 and a half points, 44 percent from the floor, 41 from distance. He's a guy that can beat you inside and out. Had a strong career. Began the, the career at Cal State Fullerton, by the by. So he'll complete that three-point opportunity. Check it back in for the Rockets. The true freshman out of Pontiac, Michigan. Went to Detroit Jesuit High School. Very strong athletic program across the board in Motown. Sonny Wilson. Michigan Gatorade Player of the Year his senior yeah. year. It's a big get for uh, Todd Kowalczyk. Heavily recruited young man Von Cameron Davis. That's going to be a blocking foul as Davis went right back strong on his way to the rack through the paint. Not a lot of strategic strategy with that. Von Cameron, Von Cameron Davis coming right downhill into your kitchen. Ben White tried to slide over and take the charge, didn't get there in time. Well, ben White on the floor, six foot nine, played at Long Island University, also played at William and Mary. Dr. Kowalczyk brought him into this program. Davis thought about the three. Toledo by a deuce. Close to seven minutes in. Santiago. Rip it cord is Giovanni on that deep three. Only 31% on triple tries. Don't let that fool you. He's got a sweet stroke. He certainly does. That's his 38th made triple of the season. So he's got shooter's mentality. Lewis tried to put it up strong. Sam Lewis. The six foot six inch freshman, Simeon of Academy, that great program in the city of Chicago. And Lewis gonna go to the free throw line. Only got 11 minutes of game, Todd, this year for Todd Kowalczyk. Average a little less than four a game, but going to him early here in this one. Yeah, big time upside on the offensive end, Sam Lewis. That time he got the cut down the lane and gets to the free throw line. Where he is, he's not shot the ball well from the charity stripe. Sam Lewis is 55% from the line, but a guy that can really stroke the three when he gets his feet set, his size and length, again, big upside for him in this Rocket program. Tyam Freeman has checked in, the uh, graduate student for Kent State, wears number 22. Off the bench of head coach Rob Senderoff. Kent State with a basketball and on top by one. Again, Toledo handled them handily. Beat them by 15, beat them by 14, just played six days ago at uh, Savage Center on the campus University of Toledo. And, uh, you know, of course, so you would expect Rob Senderoff, though, to come back off that loss 
and have his squad ready in this one given uh, all the tournament success center off said well they're gonna be ready whether they're the one seed the eight seed it doesn't matter they're gonna play with force on both ends of the floor physicality and now you know being the eight seed you know nobody expects him to win this ball game now if you, the game within the game Kent State Toledo was a, was a back and forth battle the first half at Savage Arena six days ago Toledo went on a, a run late in the first half to put him up eight going into the break to break open a close game then Toledo took control in the second half you see number 27 of the game for Toledo Marco Melitech doesn't get a lot of playing time but in that game Friday night he came in and for one possession knocked down a three do you think this is half. more as you said against Kent State you think this is more about matchups and uh, just the, the familiarity of playing just six days ago for Todd Kowalczyk uh, Yes, because you know because your game plan you don't have to worry about a new scout It's just about making tweaks to the current one Cochran lost the basketball numbers great look Santiago to Davis easy deuce defensive end started that very well for Kent State uh, go back to Marco Militech. He's in the game to do one thing and then is shoot the three So Todd Kowalczyk trying to space the floor loosen up that Kent State defense But for him to get shots it's gonna be a dribble penetration now firing that three Sonny Wilson didn't go down Kent State with a three-point lead and looking to add to it here eight and a half minutes in Von Cameron Davis double figures already for him. Oh look at Davis so strong at going glass He just went right at Andre Lorenzen and overpowered him on the way to the rim Yeah, that's the that's the matchup too. They see Lorenz down. He's gonna take him right to the rim utilizing strength and speed and He's had a lot of success finishing shots a shot was rejected as trying to go to the hoop for Toledo was Tyler Cochran had it slapped away Starting to feel some rumbling in the Kent State crowd here up by five and playing well against the top seed the Floor for the golden flashes again Magnus Entenmann. That's a deep triple did not draw any iron from uh, Kent State's Tyam Freeman all right, we are inside the uh, 12 minute mark Numbers on the run out Santiago and Von Cameron Davis Davis off to a huge start He's got ten for Kent State Guy along with Rhett Boyd all of our terrific crew Adam Meyer our producer Mike Bacon our director and Kent State we just I've told you twice already about here's the numbers back-to-back -back. last time Toledo wins by 15 strong performance Although Von Cameron Davis did have 20 and he's going back to exactly couldn't offset Raheem Moss and uh, Dante Maddox, but he got his even in a 15-point loss. And, they, and, they, and they're really relying on that success that he had here early in the ball game. 12 paint points for Kent State in this game. 12 of their 15, and 10 of them have come from Von Cameron Davis. And, and Toledo right now, they're trying to use Cochran. They're trying to use Lorenzen on him, and he's just been too strong getting to get into his spots inside. So we'll see if Toledo what adjustment they make. They could go to Javen Simmons, although I'm sure they're trying to keep Javen Simmons off of him and keep him out of foul yeah. trouble until late in the ball game. But they're going to have to find out or figure out something different here early on because he's not in a rhythm early. He's already five or six for the floor. That's a terrific look inside as Simmons was able to find Sonny Wilson, but Wilson got belted. As he tried to get a terrific look from Javen Simmons. Simmons, who's been such a huge factor here in his first season of playing with Todd Kowalczyk, adding to this front court. Look at that dish. Yeah, good vision there, Sonny Wilson. Good job utilizing the shot fake again. Or Kent State, you want to say Central Michigan? Kent State has a propensity of fouling. We said it in the last ball game five days ago. Six days ago, Toledo was 18 for 22 from the charity stripe. And this is the third time they've been there this this afternoon. So back at the floor is uh, Mike Bakelja, who wears up 15. As you get a good look, 
Now this extremely talented 6-1 freshman out of Pontiac, Michigan went to as we said Jesuit High Detroit Jesuit High a uh, tradition rich program in the Motor City Just missed a couple of throws though now, Toledo that's uh, an area on the year the Rockets at 76 percent very solid uh, Three of seven right now don't want to this is not the time to uh, you know start to uh, Go a foul from the free throw line. There's no doubt about it. Especially when you've utilized that statistic as a strength of yours in the two wins. Absolutely. Against Kent State. Cochran with strength. What glass wouldn't go down. His basketball picked up uh, by Javen Simmons. Well, Moss had trouble but got it back. Shot clock at 10. Raheem Moss, that's a tough fadeaway jumper. Never got it to the rim. Kent State's physicality on defense has really disrupted this Toledo attack. And it's getting yeah. late in the shot clock where they're going to hit their fourth, they're going to have the four shots oversized. The folks, the Rockets are a terrific offense. Now, they average 81 a game. As we said, they shoot 48% for the floor, 38% for three. None of that has borne fruit yet here. In the first 11 minutes, off the mark with that triple try for uh, Kent State. Julius Rollins, who's checked in, a six foot seven inch sophomore. Simmons powering his way to the cup. Didn't finish, but got it back. Moss with a beautiful pass to the left of the rim to Tyler Cochran. Quick deuce, Toledo. Yeah, quick diagonal look there. One of the easy ones that they've gotten here. In this first half, Jalen Sullinger running offense along with Giovanni Santiago and Rob Senderoff. Kent State backcourt. Shot clock at five. Go time for Sullinger. Excellent Toledo defense. Sullinger, uh uh. Nope, that's not going to count. That's a 30 second shot clock violation. As Toledo's D was stifling. It was good help in the gap. It was Raheem Moss that got a deflection that really disrupted the possession there for Kent State. Sullivan did a good job of regaining control, getting the step through, but the ball was still in his hand as the horn sounded. You know, Kent State's lead is three. Toledo, a lot of their success, he said, number one in the conference offensively, 81 points a game. A lot of it, obviously, in the half court, but they get a lot out of the transition and getting to the free throw line. So far in this ball game, they've not got they've not gotten transition points, and when they've gotten to the free throw line seven times, they only knocked down three so far. So, got to clean up those areas there and get more player movement and ball movement offensively early in the possession, yeah. so you don't have to force it late. Tyler Cochran with uh, Sonny Wilson, Javen Simmons. Dante Maddox, got to get him going too. Hasn't had even many touches. In the paint, leaving that short was Javen Simmons. But the Rockets come down, going to get a second chance opportunity as we come inside the eight-minute mark. Wilson got in the paint, didn't get it to fall. Rockets have missed a lot of... Chippies around the rim here in the opening half. Pakelja to fire the three that didn't fall. One and done. Toledo on the glass with Tyler Cochran. Cochran, great look to Wilson for the easy bucket. Give that uh, big assist to Tyler Cochran. Yeah, the, just probing with the dribble. Tyler Cochran keeping it alive until the play can develop. Good run by Sonny Wilson to get the easy deuce. So Simmons now on by Cameron Davis. Davis got double teamed there as he tried to curl into the paint. Excellent ball fake on the baseline from Jalen Sullinger that got that to fall. It gave him just a half step on Sonny Wilson. And then once he got inside, he was able to use his strength to finish. Donovan Hunter is on the floor for Rob Sendorov. He's a 6'8 freshman out of Columbus. Kent State by three. Got a whistle from Todd Van Sassen. That is going to be a Kent State foul. 
Tell you about it when we come back inside the seven minute mark. Tight one going on. You wouldn't expect anything different. Kent State by three. Strong move to the rim from Jalen Sullinger. Told you all about the success that Rob Senderoff has had in the Mid-American Conference uh, tournament. And take a seven championships. They're the defending MAC tournament champions. And, you know, Senderoff has uh, been a staple, as we said, now with his 13th season. It's all time winning this coach in Kent State uh, history, Red, with 262 wins coming into today. And he began his career. Remember that? He, when he, First game he coached as a head coach, he went into West Virginia and beat Bob Huggins in West Virginia. Tried to do more here as that opportunity for Raheem Moss didn't go down. Kent State. For the Toledo Rockets. On the perimeter, they're doing a good job of just staying level and square with Raheem Moss, making him shoot over the top and not giving him a crease to the glass. Strong move to the bucket again. How about Jalen Sullinger? He turned the corner and got that to fall. Young man who averages 15 a game, and he's got Kent State up five. Largest lead of the year late morning. That is Toledo answer. Simmons didn't want to pull the trigger. Got to get this young man going. That could be a start. How about with strength for Dante Maddox, the N1 coming? Yeah, this is the second time he's had an N1 opportunity doing just this. Turn the corner, low compact dribble, gets to the chest of the defender, and able to finish through contact. And that foul, not only does it give Dante Maddox a three point opportunity, Toledo now is in the bonus for the rest of the half. That's a 17 foul. On Kent State. And we'll see if Toledo uses that to their advantage to get a good look at Dante Maddox. Strong junior backcourt performer for that man. Todd Kowalczyk out of Chicago. Average better than 15 a game. Four boards and three assists this year. Plays both ends of the floor as Dante Maddox. Complete player. Solinger or Santiago rather going to fire up that uh, quick triple. Giovanni Santiago, but we've got a whistle. We're going to keep it down at the offensive end of um, Kent State. Is that Akron foul is going to be called on Andre Lorenzen, the young man from Sweden? His work of trying to block out on the inside and lost lost sight of where the Kent State player was. To reach down and grab him. Look at Sullinger off the pull up, just five ten. Don't let that fool you. Got the entire bag in his offensive tricks. And when he gets it rolling, look out, because he can score in bunches. Yeah, that he can. The lead is four. That's it a fire to three. Is that a triple? It yeah, is. bring that up. On the year, 45%. So no surprise. You know that's in the uh, Kent State Scotty report. The second in the conference in three-point field goal percentage coming in at 46%. It's played really well for Toledo in the last month of the season, not just from the arc, but in between the blocks as well. We hit five minutes and inside of it here in the opening half. Toledo back to within one. Von Cameron Davis. Could be an offensive foul. I think so. Von Cameron Davis is going to get whistled. Might have used the off arm to clear space. Dante Maddox square. You see Don, er, Don Cameron Davis just throwing all of his weight right square into the chest of Dante Maddox. And that warrants the call. Rob Senderoff having a chat with uh, lead official Todd Van Sassen. Doesn't seem to concur, but what head coach would. That's strength right there, folks. Raheem Moss. Contact didn't bother him. Went high off the window. Toledo back on top. Santiago to the pull up. Halfway down and rattled out. Toledo's got the lead again. Trying to add to it. Maddox gave it up. Lorenzen. That's going to be a uh, foul off the ball. You can see that coming, Red. Yep. They're going to get Ben White. The 6'9 junior for setting an illegal ball screen. Yeah, ben White in the post and his turns and tries to ward off the defender trying to get over the top. He gets caught for a moving screen.
You see that call from uh, official Chris Beaver. He was all over that. It was the right call. It was the right call. It, it was. Did get set. Toledo by one. Good one going on. Wouldn't expect anything less to the first close to 16 minutes of this first Mac quarterfinal. Tough jumper, Sullinger. Missed it wide right. Lorenzen will board. Moss took a look down in the box at Javen Simmons. Didn't go there. Now Raheem Moss. Tough jumper in a crowd. I couldn't turn the corner. And of course, taking off balance shot over the top of two defenders. Laron Hornbeek, by the by, is uh, back on the floor for Kent State. That's a clean look at three. Toledo uh, not uh, putting a defender on uh, Mike Bakelja. And then that shot rejection around the rim. Kent State playing well. They've lost sizably to Toledo twice this year. Toledo nine. And I don't know. Red boy finishing the story, huh? First Mac tournament championship since 1980. I remember that Mac tournament win for the Rockets back in 1980, and uh, now you know, it's all of it. They have taken care of winning Mac regular season titles, but it's about getting the elusive Mac tournament championship for the Rockets to get that automatic berth to the the big dance. And, and, and it's a great it's a headline for everybody but the 15 guys and coaching staff in that program who zero in at the moment Each team is a different team. The league is different each year And you just got to lock in game in and game out. Oh good cut to the rim there on the inbounds. You got to lock in game in and game out and And for, for mid-majors whether who it, no matter who it is in the match your body of work for four and a half months is really irrelevant. It's about what you do with three straight days here in the tournament to dictate whether you're going to play the big dance or not. Unfortunate, but true. Sullinger, deep fire miss, but look at the offensive bound for Von Cameron Davis, who's had a terrific first half. Davis with 10 points to lead everybody. Davis got another bucket. Looked like he was going to lose the rock, came up with it. His strength again shows up around the rim. And Freddie Wilson tried to get in front and take a charge, and there was contact, but the referees let it go. And here's Dante Maddox. Maddox off the mark. Davis has got a board. One and done. Kent State by one after that, uh, that Davis strength around the hoop. This is Claron Hornbeak. He got in trouble and threw it away. Excellent steal, Sonny Wilson, the true freshman for Todd Kowalczyk. Wilson put his shoulder down, but left his floater short, left it front iron. It's twice now, he's got that right down the lane to his spot. Usually knocks that shot down, but he's, he said he's left it short. Rapidly moving first half, huh? Played 18 minutes inside the two minute mark. Santiago double team. This is Jalen Sullinger now. He and Santiago, terrific backcourt. Santiago forced that triple and sticks it right in front of the Toledo bench. Off balance, leaning in, doesn't matter. He stroked it to add to the Kent State lead. That was really good defense, hand in his face, but he just rose and fired over the top. Knocked it in. Four point advantage. Todd Van Sassen. Terrific crew here, by the way. Our officiating crew. Known all three of these gentlemen for a long time. Todd Van Sassen, Chris Beaver, and also uh, Tony Meeks. That's nine team fouls on Kent State in the first 18 and a half minutes. A so one in bonus time for the Toledo Rockets as you get a good look at Rob Senderoff. As we said, you know, I mean, Kent State, 15 and 16 on the year, 8 and 10 in the 8th seed. But, you know, when you you know Rob Senderoff's strength come March in that tournament time. And he has shown it over and over again. And off that free throw miss, game official Tony Meeks has got a reach in foul. And it's going to go on uh, Toledo. They got Tyler Cochran there. Not yet in the bonus, though. 
is Kent State. Four they of nine. They do have the four-point lead. Four of nine. Toledo is from the free throw line in this four and uh, yet not showing up here in downtown Cleveland. And, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, you hate to look at one situation like that. You just mentioned what Todd Kowalczyk was discussing, but he's right. Every team's different. Every season is different. But it's hard for us. We can't ignore things that go back with a pro. We don't ignore the good. Right. We're constantly discussing yeah. the good. Yeah. And I've had this conversation with Todd, yeah. quite frankly. I'm constantly emphasizing the good, but when the situation comes up on the other end of that, well, you got to discuss that too. You That's be, our job. You got to be great for three days, and they've well, been no doubt. Davis, but threw it away. Terrific defensive play by the freshman Sonny Wilson. Davis got in the air. Moss gonna go glass. Wilson had a board, and I think Von Cameron Davis just flat out took it from him. Come inside 60 seconds left here. Kent State by four. Again, if you're just joining us, Toledo handily has beaten Kent State twice in the regular season. Handily. Both wins. Wins by 14 and 15 points. Not mattering a, a bit right now as Julius Rollins, 6'7 sophomore, has just stretched the Kent State lead to a half a dozen. Cochran forced that in the paint and got it to go down. Strong finish from the 6'2 junior, Tyler Cochran. Tito's, Tito's done a good job of pounding the ball into the paint. They just have not finished. we got a big advantage there. Yeah, they just not They've finished with a the big norm. physical advantage. Yeah, they haven't just finished but with the regularity. Yeah, yeah. Exactly right. They're 35% right now in the first half. Had no problem getting there. Right. So you have to battle the complex, but the important battle is you got to finish those shots. With five left, Sullinger. Pull up, Jay. Nope. That is how the first half is going to come to an end. The energy filled first 20 minutes of basketball, and right now it's a Kent State Golden Flashes who've uh, grabbed this four point advantage. Well, how they've done it, they've, they've shot the basketball decently. At 46% from the floor, but maybe even more of a consequence. They've held Toledo to 34%. Yeah, they were outstanding defensively, making everything difficult for for Toledo. And what kids they needed to do, they got the ball. The ball tournament is brought to you by Cleveland Clinic Sports Medicine, the official health care provider of the 2024 basketball tournament. And by Medical Mutual, the official health insurer of the 2024 Mac Basketball Tournament. Spectacular sights, seen, sounds in downtown Cleveland. Today. It's all about the hoops, right? ESPN uh, delighted to be able to bring you the Mid-American Conference Tournament quarterfinals. Michael Regai alongside Red Boyd, our terrific crew. Let's go. Second 20 minutes with the final 20 minutes. I hesitate to say yes, definitively. Tight one. Kent State with a basketball to start the second half by four. Von Cameron Davis went into the paint. And I'm not sure how Magnus Entman didn't finish. Got a wry smile on his face because the basketball didn't go down for him. Von Cameron Davis. It'll go down for him. Toledo Rockets have to do something about about Cam. We said in the first half, Red, his strength in the paint has hurt him. It really has. And David Simmons able to slow him down a little bit in the first half. There, he got Simmons off his feet with the head fake. That got him a clean look at the rim from two feet. This is Simmons looking to answer. Got shut off. Cochran to triple. What a big time offensive board. Where he Moss had it and then lost it. Kent State try to add to their six-point lead. Just underway here in half number two. Good to have you along. The first of four today. That's an offensive foul. That's an emphatic call on that offensive foul by game official Todd Van Sassen as he uh, 
Got that, yeah, that, that's a good call, too, yeah, uh, by Cameron Davis. Lead it with the shoulder. Lower that shoulder. That, anytime the defensive player takes a hit in the middle of the chest, advantage defense on that, for you know, in terms of what it looks like for the official. Those are two big dudes going at it down there in that block. Davis and Simmons. Let Toledo go to ignite their offense here, although they've had a couple of chippies, too, in the, in the paint that they didn't finish. Yeah, it's not a matter of getting, of, of, where, of getting to your spots. It's a matter of finishing Sonny Wilson, who missed a couple Sonny inside, got, those, got that one to go. Toledo just 35% in the opening half. Again, got to finish those plays when you get them in close range. Going strong to the rack and getting that to fall is Jalen Sullinger, only five foot ten, but he plays about a foot taller than that in the paint. Later, late in the first half, and here, right there on that drive, he's been able to get to the rim and have success. Jalen Sullinger in double numbers with ten. Wilson, freshman for Toledo, is trying to take over. Shot clock comes inside 10. This is Dante Maddox. Shot clock at three. Cochran got to get it off. That's a tough jumper that drew iron. Basketball will go to Kent State. Really good defense here by Kent State again. Getting Toledo late into the clock and forcing them to shoot over contested hands. Are you a big believer, partner, in the longer this goes? With Kent State holding the lead, the advantage goes to the lower seed. Oh, absolutely. I mean, right now their confidence is growing in this ball game as time has gone on. They've done it. It's because they've done it the way they wanted to do it. That's pound the paint, you know, inside. Going right back to Davis. Now that double showed up. But Kelja will sweet stroke the three. And there's the issue for Toledo. You almost have to now go double Davis on his catches. If Kent State makes perimeter jumpers and threes, trouble. They doubled, and, and Boston took the cutter, which left Bakelja open on the perimeter. Well, that's a deep triple. Fired, not able to go down for Raheem Moss. We're three minutes of some change into the second half, and don't look now, but Kent State's lead growing. Deep triple that didn't fall. Board grab, but a whistle's going to go on Toledo. Sullinger quick triggered that three, but that Toledo foul says game official Chris Beaver is going to go on Sonny Wilson. No, at Kent State, too, they're, they're out. They're without Chris Payton, one of their leaders. That's right. One of their best post player. Reggie Bass is out as well today, so they're doing this shorthanded, which again just fuels their confidence level. How about that defensive steal from Dante Maddox, and then he'll sweet stroke the three. Did it on both ends, did the terrific 6'2 junior out of Chicago, Dante Maddox. Toledo only two transition points in the opening half. Got that three to go there. Sullinger. Stepped on that baseline turnover on Jalen Sullinger at Kent State. Not a contact on there in the baseline. I tell you what, there's nothing soft in this game. Double no. drives are contested. Rebounds, obviously, bodies banging each other, trying to get in position for second chance opportunities. And if, if you handle the ball on the dribble drive, you're going to take contact, got to play through it. And I think this officiating trio, as we said, one of the best in the back, Chris Beaver, Todd Van Sassen, and Tony Meeks, they've, they've shown through 24 minutes, we're going to let you play. Yep, that was exactly right. They're going to say, boys, you're going to determine this. That's exactly right. Simmons, there's a good case. Was maybe some contact around that block, possibly. But Simmons didn't get it to fall. Now we've got a whistle on the Von Cameron Davis drive to the cup. And that Toledo foul is going to go on the true freshman, Sonny Wilson. All right. The intensity and the excitement starting to pick up as Kent State starting to shoot it well from deep. Say, I think we'll have the lead. And he, he will certainly do. Look, there, there's there's no finesse to that. By Cameron Davis here this afternoon is all powered downhill to the glass. And he's been able to soften up that Toledo interior. Well, he has been terrific in his 22 minutes at Toledo. Can they get a, find a way to not only slow him down, but to start to get their normal offense back, as in being able to, to finish? They've gotten in the paint well. 
Now stepping out and firing the three on Cameron Davis. We're going to go the other way. Lorenzen on the deck as he has checked in. The 6A junior Andre Lorenzen of Toledo. Basketball going to go back to the Rockets trailing by six. So right now for head coach Todd Kowalczyk. He's going to go with uh, Dante Maddox and Raheem Moss as two top scorers. Javen Simmons, Lorenzen, that's a strong drive to the hole. Again, Simmons got there, couldn't finish it. One and done for Toledo on the offensive end. Down by a half dozen as Giovanni Santiago will run offense for Kent State. Davis. Got into the paint again. He's got 16. He's 8 of 10 from the floor. Yeah, he's got it going on right now. And there's Moss going hard to the rim, but a little bit out of control. Santiago trying to add to this already eight point lead. There's the double now on Davis. Firing the three and filling up the three is Mike Bakelja. Todd Kowalczyk said, wait a minute, this is now an 11-point deficit, and he wants and gets a Toledo timeout. What does Todd Kowalczyk go to as his top seed right now? Uh, kind of reeling down by 11, biggest lead of the, uh, the first quarterfinal for Kent State. Kent State Golden Flash is playing outstanding basketball. They've upped their lead to 11. You look at this perennial powerhouse. We've explained that to you under Rob Senderoff. Although oh, the seasons of 500 or better. Now, they came into today 50 to 16 overall, 8 and 10 in the max. So, you know, that could be hanging in the balance. But uh, that man and his program have always shown up big in downtown Cleveland in the MAC tournament. And they have so, so far in this ball game as well. And, and their ability to attack Toledo in the paint is they had a lot of success. Here's Maddox coming up with pin down. Didn't get the three to go down, but uh, game official Chris Beavers got that foul on Von Cameron Davis. And then what you're seeing with Kent State here is the ability to score inside, forcing Toledo to set an extra defender. And then Kent State's been able to beat him with the, with the ball movement rotation on the perimeter to get McKelge a couple of three looks here in the last couple of possessions. Toledo now down to just 34% from the floor. Raheem Moss. There's that double coming on Moss, and he turned the basketball over, and then Toledo commits the foul on Tyler Cochran. Rockets continue to look out of sync when that second defender, like there, from uh, Kent State's Julius Rollins comes to the ball. You're absolutely right. It's just been disruptive. They've been disruptive and made every shot contested and hard you know, for Toledo. And Toledo's not been able to get any kind of rhythm Offensively here this afternoon Toledo Rocket fans as I uh, look at them across the way trying to implore their basketball team They got to start getting stops defensively easier said than done against this man Von Cameron Davis tough jumper didn't go down Trying to save Toledo. Did they get the timeout? Well, how about the uh, How about the strength of mind from Raheem Moss there? Before it landed with a basketball out of bounds, he was able to get the timeout. Yeah, good presence of mind by him. You see Cochran able to seal it. Moss, Johnny on the spot. See timeout right there before he hit it, right in front of the official. So it'll get the timeout. So we'll keep it right here as you look at uh, this. For Todd Kowalczyk. If you look through the conference, just look at the last three weeks of conference play and look at all what people would consider upsets, you know, that occurred in the final three weeks of the season. It just shows the parity of this conference and why this tournament is so great each and every year. I'm not sure upset is a usable term when it comes to the Mid-American <laughs> Conference. I, I'm really not. I've been around you know this conference though. for over 30 years. I just don't think it is. That's a blocking foul. 
as Andre Lorenzen, the 6'8 junior, put it on the deck. He's going to get to the free throw line. Yeah, I said when, you, when, you, when you're scrolling through the final handful of games for teams, Ohio, they're the hottest team six in a row. Yeah. Toledo's won three in a row. But you got a lot of teams that come into this tournament two and three, three and two in their last five. Yep. And again, it, it just shows you to the talent. The coaching in this league the, the, where you got to bring it each and every night or it, it's not gonna work out on your behalf and No, and the two seed the Akron Zips of head coach John Gross. They're one of those teams that are not playing their best basketball right now now Can they eliminate all that and make it old news starting later today? Yes, sure, but right now that's a fact. The tournament is a chance for teams to wipe the slate clean, zero and zero, just like you start back in November. You just got to find a way to be three and up. Lorenzen, a couple of makes, got Toledo back to within nine. What do the Rockets do on the defensive end now? That step back triple, not going to go down. One and done. Jalen Sullinger misfired from deep. Raheem Moss with Dante Maddox. Off the spin. Going to the free throw line is Tyler Cochran. Well, Cochran has got a big time game with that uh, that linebacker body of his at only six foot two. Well, and that's where it's a little bit different here. Uh, this particular possession was quick and decisive. On the catch, Tyler Cochran put the ball on the ground quickly. Quick decision with the spin. It got to the glass before that second defender can't come over. And now he gets a chance to get to the free throw line. 72% from the line on the year. This young man from Bolingbrook, Illinois. Also was played at the Ball State in the Mid-American Conference as well. Before joining the Toledo Rockets. Toledo scuffling from the free throw line today. 6 of 12 right now. For the Rockets, 50%. Cochran averaged 14 a game and six and a half boards. Significant piece for head coach Todd Kowalczyk. He'll split the pair from the line. The Kent State lead is eight. 13 minutes and some change left in this one. Tyler Cochran, he said it. 14 points and change. The co-defensive player of the year as well in this conference. Excellent two-way player. Kent State going with their veteran backcourt of Jalen Sullinger and Giovanni Santiago. 2 3 zone by Toledo here, changing things up. This is Santiago. Toledo does not play a lot of zone. They're trying to give them a, Kent a different look. There's McKell's on the corner. Missed the open look. Off that missed triple try, the board for Toledo is Andre Lorenzen. Rockets trying to cut into their eight-point deficit. Cochran. A lot of girth against Santiago. Moss, the triple. Clean look at three, and the Raheem Moss couldn't connect. Now putting it on the deck. Jalen Sullinger gave it up to Santiago. Offensive board and stick back will go down for Julius Rollins. The lead is back to double digits. We're going to come inside 12 minutes left. Maddox thought about pulling the trigger and now Toledo turns it over. Kent State threw it right back away. Doesn't usually happen to Giovanni Santiago. Not a good decision. Yeah, good hustle by Simmons to get back into the play. Strength from Simmons. Lorenzen trying to crash one and done for Toledo We're inside 12 minutes left. The lead is 10 for the eight seed Kent State over one seed Toledo to the show zone that one possession now they go back man to man Shot clocks inside five that deep three not going to fall. Basketball out of bounds. One and done. They used the whole shot clock. 
that Jalen Sullinger as he and uh, Giovanni Santiago discuss it. All right, don't go away. The lead is 10 for the eight seed over the one seed on that. Back inside Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse uh, through 29 minutes of basketball, the two Toledo decisive wins over Kent State in the regular season, not holding form at the moment. As you look at Jim Christian, former head basketball coach at Kent State with uh, Von Cameron Davis. They've got a 10-point lead right now, and they're doing it without getting to the free throw line, but Toledo, Red Boyd, this team that shoots on the season through 31 basketball games, 48% as a team at 30% here this afternoon. Give Kent State a lot of credit defensively. This shows zone here coming out of the timeout, but they put Toledo at the foul line 31 times in game one, 22 in game two, only 13 here this afternoon. What they've done a better job is uh, of going straight up and down, walling up, and keeping the degree of verticality and making Toledo shoot over contested hands and big bodies and not bailing Toledo out by fouling and putting him at the free throw line where they've taken full advantage of the first two ball games. Out of that timeout, the Toledo Rockets turn the basketball over right in front of Todd Kowalczyk. And uh, it certainly brought a large grimace from Todd Kowalczyk. He come out of the timeout last thing he wanted to turn the ball over right away. Von Cameron Davis with strength. That's rejected. But a whistle is going to be called uh, as Javon Simmons thought he had that clean shot block as Davis lowered that left shoulder going left right through the paint. It'll be at the line. The call is the body call. It's, it's, they're calling Javon Simmons with the body, not necessarily on the block shot. This is the first time that Kent State's been to the free throw line. No surprise who it is with the job that Von Cameron Davis has done here this afternoon. Davis has been special in his 34 minutes of basketball today. It's his first trip to the free throw line. Davis now with 17 and 8 as he's a couple of boards away from a double-double as Todd Kowalczyk is going to give Raheem Moss his uh, leading point producer on the year. Just a shade under 16 a game, a respite, and get Sonny Wilson back on the floor. Davis just hit a pair. This lead has grown to a dozen. The largest lead of the late morning, early afternoon for Kent State. Eight seed folks trying to take out the one seed Toledo Rockets in the quarterfinals. Kent State staying in the zone, trying to force Toledo to take some open jump shots, which in the past was Toledo's strength. This is a different bet ball club this year. More built, put the ball on the floor, get downhill. Trying to take advantage. Maybe get some errant misses from the perimeter, but they're going to call for a foul here. Tyler Cocker going to the rim. That is 16 fouls now for Kent State. Yeah, they got the big Claron Hornbeak on that. The young man who uh, is from Toledo, Ohio, grew up Saint in Fran the Glass Saint City. Yeah, Saint, Saint Francis. Francis. Saint Great Saint basketball Saint program, high school program. Played for Travis Lewis at yeah. Saint Francis. Now Cochran going to put it on the deck. Went class. That's a strong move on by the Toledo Rockets. Tyler Cochran, the 6'2 junior. Toledo back within 10 halfway through this second half still a long way to go for, for the Rockets who are extremely capable firing the three halfway down but kicked out on Jalen Sullinger the basketball is going to go Toledo's way Sullinger did a great job of reading the defense coming off that screen faded to that corner got a great look at it wore a lot of paint off that rim before it rattled out. Staying in the zone is Rob Cinderoff. Kent State. Wilson. Oh, yeah. Count that. And one coming from the line. The 18 year old, the true freshman out of the Motor City of Detroit, went glass and got it to fall. And Sonny Wilson turning the corner, absorbing contact, getting it up and down. 
Averaged eight points a game, but his offensive game has grown as the season has developed. It's been a double figure, six of those last 11 ball games. Season high 20 against the Buffalo Bulls just two weeks ago. Wilson to complete the three-point opportunity brings Toledo back to within seven. They were down a dozen a minute ago. So they've almost cut it in half on a couple of possessions. Now they're going to not tight pressure. They'll relax it, but show it a little bit of three-quarter court pressure on the basketball. How does Kent State look to respond offensively? Trying to they go want to... Von Cameron Davis. Sullinger. Shot clock at six. Nowhere to go. Sullinger. Santiago off balance. Didn't get it to fall. Von Cameron Davis kept it alive. Santiago left that short. Von Cameron Davis offensive board. Big time stick back. Yeah. Two offensive rebounds in that possession. Second chance opportunities paying off for the Golden Flashes. Cochran put it on the deck. Big time offensive board and finish. Javen Simmons for Toledo. I'll tell you what, the intensity has been picked up on both sides here in the last couple of minutes of this ball game. Inside nine minutes left. Von Cameron Davis. 20 points, nine boards, huge for Kent State. Recycle that shot clock to 20 seconds on the Toledo kick. Well, keep uh, keep an eye on both Raheem Moss and Dante Maddox. Red Boyd, if Toledo is going to come back and get this done, those two are going to have to lead the way. I agree with you 100%. Might add Tyler Cochran to that as well. Davis trying to take Javen Simmons. Excellent defensive job by Simmons. But Kent State came up with a basketball with a fresh shot clock. It'll stay with Kent State. But Telgen's done a great job of offensive rebounding, keeping play and possessions alive for Kent State. They're going to reset the shot clock here to. That's what they're going to discuss what they're going to reset the shot clock to. But you see here, Davis with the miss. There's Mikel. Mikel just digs it out right there. Saves the possession. Cochran gets his hands out. He gets a steal. Mikel just quick hands right back. Doing a lot of the dirty work in addition. Knocking down a couple of three balls earlier. We're going to come inside. Eight minutes left. Hang on, everybody. The one seed. Uh, they're reeling. Although they've played a little bit better in the last couple of minutes. Kent State by seven. And this is Jalen Sullinger. Got it up on the glass. Didn't get it to go down. Cochran big board. Wilson going to get to the free throw line. We are going to catch our breaths. You should too. Sonny Wilson, true freshman. Showing all kinds of basketball aptitude. Trying to bring his squad back from this deficit. Wilson to the cup. He'll be at the free throw line when we come back. It's a pep band. They picked it up a little bit on the offensive end. We're at 30%. Got it up near 35 in their last few possessions. Going to need more of that on the offensive end. We're speaking up. Rocky knows that as the Rockets trying to work their way. They were down a dozen, though. They've got it back to seven here with still a world of time left. In Toledo is in the bonus from here on out. Sonny Wilson had a chance to cut it to five here from the free throw line. But use that. You can do it. Yeah. They haven't so far. They haven't so far. so far. Only eight of 14, 57% today. But throughout the course of the season, it's been an advantage for them. You're going to come all the way back and take advantage of every opportunity you've got coming down the stretch. And again, another missed free throw. 79% on the year is this young man. Just 18 years of age, a true freshman. Todd Kowalczyk been down this road before here in downtown Cleveland trailing as minutes get short and Sonny Wilson just missed a pair 
That's points with a clock stop when you're trailing you go not just for Sonny Wilson to everybody When the clock stop you're down, you know almost double digits the free throw line is a must You got to take advantage of it when that clock stopped and so they didn't do it there And I'll see what Kent State can add to their lead Von Cameron Davis shot clock at three Davis Got it up Got it in the bucket using the back rim by Cameron Davis is having a tremendous afternoon. And right there, that was good defense by David Simmons, but David just up and powered it right through Simmons. Lead back to nine again. Cockburn's gonna load up a three and bury that deep triple. Oh, that's a sight that Todd Kowalczyk was waiting for from his sharpshooters to start finding the range from deep. Now Toledo's gonna have to start getting stops here on the defensive end. And no, no secret where Kent State's going. They're playing through one and goal, Don Cameron Davis. Two possessions, six point Kent State lead, who have played terrific today against the top seed, the Toledo Rockets, who took them apart twice this season. Davis on the back down. Nowhere to go, but got it up and got it down. Now the last two opportunities he's used his power He's drawn rim on both of them, but nice soft touch to get him to fall it's a Great combination to have if you're a low block player power and then touch lead is back up to eight trying to lower his shoulder for the Toledo Rockets is J Javen Simmons He's gonna go to the free throw line. Well, we might as well write down right now with 604 left Toledo just went over two from the line so who knows they might have 10 12 free throw attempts coming up in these final six minutes Got to start using it to your advantage to cut into this eight-point deficit right now You need as much time on the clock as if you're Toledo and take advantage of every Opportunity that you have and and right now with that clock stop David Simmons needs to knock down both these free throws Stay to keep within two possessions but Toledo's also got to talk about how they're going to deal with one and gold. Now we've seen them double, and when they double, Kent State's been ready for it, have taken full advantage of it, with whether it's the di the diver to the rim or the kick out extra pass open three. So tough decision to go to Do You want to commit an extra guy and take a chance with an open look from the perimeter, or just hope that Mount Cameron Davis comes up with a miss against pretty good defense by Javon Simmons. And then you try to board him. You see there, they're trying to see if it's he's, what they're looking at there, if it's clock or what. But well, Rob said Rob wasn't pleased, and that's why, as you see that, he's looking at as Simmons brought his off arm up around the uh, the neck face area. Toledo has missed their last three from the free throw line. Continues to be a struggle. Claron Hornbeek. We'll check back in. There's Hornbreak Beak on the afternoon today. Got four personal fouls, so Rob Senderoff has had to kind of been bringing him in and out, given game situation. Now here comes Toledo pressure. The veteran Giovanni Santiago, the fifth-year senior out of Bayamon, Puerto Rico. So wait a minute. We got to talk about this to try to be able to inbound the best. You know, back his way down in the painted area, make him take a, a perimeter shot. But it's been a, it's been a struggle for Toledo defensively trying to find a way to stop one and goal by Cameron Davis. Well, Rocket fans, uh, they know they, they've been in this situation before. Uh, there have been successes coming back from deficits, and there've also been heartbreak here in downtown Cleveland. So it's been a little bit of a mixed bag for Todd Kowalczyk. He's wanting the positivity now trying to pressure the basketball a little bit more double team right in front of us Against Santiago and Sullinger both are veteran guards for head coach Rob Senderoff shot clock at seven that leaner doesn't go down, but Hornbeek has got a stick back So it'll got exactly what they wanted clock at ten Cochran Basketball will stay with Toledo. Hornbeek may have uh, certainly altered that shot attempt from Tyler Cochran as the lead's at 10 again. Cochran, good job turning the corner, getting the rim, but on the other end of the floor, Toledo got what they wanted. Sullinger at half court with 10 on the clock. 
got the miss, but nobody blocks out Hornby who goes strong to the rim and Gets an important bucket to keep Toledo at a three three possession the disadvantage Toledo, you know, not a lot of front court size to be honest with you, you know for head coach Todd Kowalczyk one of the top finesse teams in all of college basketball and uh, they're going to need all of that in the last five minutes and 28 seconds down by 10. Cochran. Hornby came out on him. Lorenzen to load up a triple. Got it. Huge stroke of the three for Andre Lorenzen of Toledo. Got him back within seven. Santiago going to the rack. It'll get to the free throw line. Toledo uh, allowing the the strong drive to the bucket as we said from the veteran these two guards now Of Kent State. Yeah, I know tough year for them fit but in Jalen Sullinger and Giovanni Santiago They both have handled the basketball run the offense and played in a lot of tight games in their career for Rob Cinderoff yeah, They've been in a lot of big ball games for sure and Santiago right there. He just beat Raheem Moss a little hesitation dribble right down the lane. We'll try to split the pair now. He comes up short on one, an 81% free throw shooter coming yep. into this one. Some nerves in the uh, the big NBA arena, and you know, I mean, hey, it's uh, it's a different thing. And unless you've been there, and unless you competed, and these type of situations, you know, it's well, It's difficult to comprehend exactly what uh, these young men young women face Well, well playing in, a, in an NBA arena like this it is a different shooting background oh, than yeah. what you're what you're normally used to in your in the college Arenas and it is an adjustment for sure. And I think we've seen that struggle here hmm. especially the free throw line by Both clubs this young man is an 82% free throw shooter just left them both short Moss will give it up. Strong swoop to the hoop and getting that to fall is Tyler Cochran. Hang on, everybody. Toledo down by 12 a moment ago. Back to within five. World of time left. Sullinger being checked by Dante Maddox. Trying to ISO Davis here against Cochran. Sullinger's gonna load up a three. Nope, missed it wide left. Toledo can cut their deficit to three, maybe to two. That whistle is out in the floor as Toledo was going to the rim. It's not a bad foul, even though it is gonna get Toledo free throws. As we've alluded to, it's not been easy from the charity strike for Toledo here this, this afternoon, 8 of 17. Gonna make Tyler Cochran earn two rather than give the uncontested lay in. 8 of 17. That's by Cameron Davis's fourth yep. foul. So see if Toledo tries to attack him coming back down the floor. And let's see if Rob Senderoff, maybe, I mean, I mean there's 419 left, but maybe four. But you don't want to do it on the offensive end. Right. Right? Maybe at the defensive end, Rob Senderoff might try to grab 30 seconds to a minute for Von Cameron Davis. Let's see. Tyler Cochran at the line. Toledo. Down by just five, but got to get the free throw line to their advantage. Cochran will look to split the pair on the year. Tyler Cochran is 72% from the stripe. Just missed them both. Oh, Toledo is having a world of struggle from the free throw line today. And I mean, yeah, you hate to say it, but I mean, you lose a basketball game by two, three, four, five points. And then you look at the free throw line today where they're five of 14. I mean, my goodness, or check that, eight of 19. Yeah, and, they're, and since they've been in the bonus at the seven minute mark, they're over five. And we do try to crawl all the way back. Again, well, it's not going to beat a dead horse in the ground, but you got to take advantage of it. 
plenty of time they left. So far yet, but it's two a possession game. Two possession ball game. Four minutes to go. For both clubs, your season's on the line. Buckle up for the final four minutes here coming down the stretch. One seed Toledo, eight seed Kent State. Toledo, two decisive wins over Kent State. Here's the pressure. Davis got in the paint. Hornby got it to go down. Every bucket now huge for Kent State. They're back up seven again. Three possession game. Lorenzen will step through. Got it. The well, Lorenzen's hit a big three, and now the step through swoop to the hoop. Uh, and that's what we've seen. Uh, that's what the Toledo fan base has seen out of him the last month. His ability to put the ball on the floor and finish. Five point game. Jalen Sullinger. That Cameron Davis has been extraordinary today. Here's the double. That triple out of that deep left corner and ring that baby up for Giovanni Santiago. His third triple of the afternoon. Had the big time shot over the extended arms of Raheem Moss. Lead is eight. Maddox had it rejected. Got it back. Plenty of time in the shot clock, but the eight point deficit is the larger problem for Toledo. Cochran with strength. Yeah, off the window. Toledo's hanging around. Got it back to a two point, two point differentiation. Kent State up six. Two possession differentiation with a six point Kent State lead. Von Cameron Davis on the back down. In the paint, got it up in the window, got it to go down. Rob Senderoff wants a timeout. What a performance from Von Cameron Davis. The 6'5 junior right here in the Buckeyes State out of Columbus. A 26.11 rebound, double-double. Huh? Yeah, you better be uh, not meek of heart to do it. Yeah, you better have your big boy pants out if you're going inside because you're gonna get hit and you're gonna get hit more than once And you better be able to play through it with toughness physicality grit and concentration You see Cocker getting the rim there by Cameron Davis all night long. He's been in that paint wreaking havoc 26 points 11 rebounds For Kent State. All right, Red Boyd if you're Todd Kowal, we're looking at Rob Senderoff right now But if you're Todd Kowalczyk, you're down by eight. You're not Shooting the basketball well at all from the free throw line time starting to dwindle What's your main mo here? Well, you, you have to attack off the dribble You just got to make a straight line hard drive to the rim And try to absorb contact and finish inside because you need right now You need to keep as much time to the clock as you can being down. Yeah, apps no long possessions exactly right. Little can't have 30 second possessions here quick decisive and go Maddox gave it up Moss had to save it. Cochran spinning in the paint. Get out of here, said Hornbeak. The young man who grew up in Toledo. Trouble time for the Toledo Rockets. We're inside two minutes left, and they're down eight. Hornbeak, two big buckets, and then that block shot here in the, the last three minutes of the ball game. Toledo must have a stop here. Shot clock. Down to five, firing that triple came up short. Toledo got their stop, but now only a minute and 40 left. Heading hard to the rim for Toledo, had it slapped out of bounds. Did Dante Maddox? Now the call is basketball to Kent State. Yes, but they're going to look at this. Yeah, the referee or Santiago is pleading with the referee that went off his thigh. And I don't think it did. That was just knocked out of the air, out of bounds. So Toledo will retain possession here. This will be quick. So our game officials, that's uh, Chris Beaver and uh, Tony Meeks. Joined by Todd Van Sassen as well, the three officials today. Well, 97 seconds left. It's an eight-point Kent State lead, and... 
Well, it's not like the Toledo Rockets have not been in this situation before in the uh, the second to third week of March here in downtown Cleveland as we take a look at this drive a moment ago from the Rockets Dante Maddox yeah that's off of Kent State I do believe seeing it live and in replay it certainly didn't go up to five like Santiago was pleading for Maddox with an 11 point afternoon the six foot two inch junior average is 15 and a half his running mate Raheem Moss averages at 16 a game on the year. Moss, though, with just four points today. And Jamin Simmons, five points. He averages 12 as well. So, you know, it's just, it's been a struggle, you know, for Toledo, uh, uh, you know, from the field. And you got to give Kent State a lot of credit. They've been much more disciplined defensively than they have in the previous two ball games. Still being able to contest over extended hands and keeping your verticality and not being, you know, and not being overly aggressive, putting Toledo at the foul line. Now Toledo has not done their part by making free throws, but Kent State's been outstanding on that end of the floor. And don't necessarily need threes yet here. A lot of time left. Slapped away again by Hornbeak is trying to go to the hoop for the uh, the Rockets and finish that was Dante Maddox. But Hornbeak has done a solid job defensively now with three block shots. Yeah, he's the weak side defender and he sees any kind of hard dribble drive. He's coming and he's going to challenge it. And he's been effective. 20 on the shot clock. That's not the issue is getting the shots and getting them quickly when you're down by eight. Cochran's going to trigger a three. He came up flat. Down by three possessions here. How long does Todd Kowalczyk let this go? We could come inside 60 seconds. I don't need to say any more because head coach Rob Senderoff got a timeout as his offense was being double teamed over on me. <laughs> Is that they'd love to play this game in the upper 50s to low to mid 60s yes you get up into 75 points well that's fair that's a hundred percent in the, the favor of the toledo rock without question by that's keeping this game in the low 60s it looks like well and toledo with only 51 points this team that uh, as we said averages 80 on the year through 31 basketball games well that's that's uh, a dream come true for Rob Sedgwick. Yeah, that's the ideal script, and it certainly has played out here this afternoon. All right, there's 20 on the shot clock. Again, I don't think Toledo can let this shot clock go down. It'll come under a minute if they do down eight. They got the rip away and steal. Bad inbound from Giovanni Santiago. Maddox to triple. Nope, came up short. Basketball belongs to Kent State. Oh, the Rockets needed that to go down. I think Maddox got a good look at it, too. He likes the, he likes being on that left side, that left side wing corner. Just couldn't get that one to go. Santiago against pressure. Turned it over again. Hornbeak had another shot rejection. That one on Dante Maddox. Inside a minute, though. But Toledo's got to get the shot up. Cochran gave it up. The triple. Nope. Didn't go down. Basketball belongs to Kent State. Toledo had the three from uh, Javen Simmons. Oh, Todd Kowalczyk's squad running out of time. The top seed. We've seen it happen so many times in the Mid-American Conference quarterfinals. Top seed gets eliminated on day one. 49 seconds for Todd Kowalczyk to try to mastermind to come back eight points down. Uh, uh, again, that is a dead ball foul. Or no, did Senderoff get a timeout? He did. Well, I was right the first time. The Toledo foul is called. And it's going to be called on Javen Simmons. Von Cameron Davis with his 26.12 rebound afternoon. He has been the shining star in this one today. 
missed it. Eight point game. So he was got to hurry. Heading to the hole with that runner off the window. It went down. Quick timeout. As getting that to fall was Dante Maddox. Degree of difficulty extreme there. Somehow he coaxed it home. Well, Makes it a two possession game now with 40 ten. and with 41 seconds left uh, Rhett, I'm thinking if you're Todd Kowalczyk You maybe play defense for five to six seconds if you get I don't think, well, look, it, pressure, yeah. But I don't think you can let it go 10 no, 12 seconds no, not at all. down two possessions with 40 seconds to go. It's either gonna be a, a, an immediate steal score or you maybe allow the trap to happen See if you get get a steal out of the trap. If not, it's got to be an immediate foul. Yep. You got to preserve clock here Yeah, so it we'll see possible. if uh, indeed there is not an immediate steal and catch state Secures the basketball and moves their way up the floor. Yeah, probably five seconds, maybe six at the most for Todd Kowalczyk to go for that steal. Coming up next, and the winner of this one will tangle with either the five seed Bowling Green or the four seed Central Michigan. That should be a good one. That's going to be We've a got real that good coming one. up next. How about those about, two teams? Yeah, half an hour after this one. Two overtime game and one of them, one overtime and the other. They like playing extra basketball, those two teams. Yeah, they do. Santiago gonna run the baseline, gonna throw the touchdown pass. Sullinger threw it up, didn't need to. Don't know why he did. Heading to the hole, Simmons gonna go to the free throw line. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I mean, I can't tell you a, a player I've enjoyed more than that young man there, Jalen Sullinger. But I, why are you taking a shot attempt that quickly? Contested. Contested when you're up by six. I think that's what Coach Herb Senderhoff's thinking about right now as well. And then on the other end of the floor, you compound it with a foul. Again, clock stops. And that's five on Vot Cameron Davis. So he's done. What a performance. 26 points on 12 of 17 from the floor. 12 boards and uh, for good measure three assists he'll leave for the duration fouled out here with 33 ticks left Yeah, big time effort by that young man now He just holds hopes that his team can hold on here in the final 33 seconds Maddox has got to get a couple here Trying to get Toledo off to schneid at the free throw line today The Rockets now with that make nine of 20 45 percent at the strike second one Got it to go down. Maddox trying to keep Toledo in it. Still a two possession game. But that Toledo foul quickly. Javen Simmons. That's four on him. One in bonus. And it's going to send to the free throw line. Karan Hornbeek, 60% on the year. For Rob Senderoff squad. Well, it's still got what you wanted. You got two, you got two points, and then you foul a 61% free throw shooter. Now, for him, who's had an outstanding last three, four minutes of this ball game, chance to extend the lead. Got the first one to go down. The lead is five. Even with a hornbeak make here, it'll stay a two possession game, although. The uh, Toledo bugaboo now. He missed the second one. And Toledo, Laquette State, get the offensive board from Mike Bakelja. This box out by Toledo on Bakelja. Talked that earlier in the ballgame, Bakelja kept a couple possessions alive, getting on the offensive glass that time. Huge rebound off that free, well, free throw. Enormous. Enormous. And now you put a 85% free throw shoot not that Toledo had a choice Sullinger has hit the first still a two possession game One more Sullinger make though enormous in that it makes it a three possession game hit them both 28 seconds left Toledo down seven Number one seed toppling here in downtown Cleveland that runner will go down from Dante Maddox 
20 ticks left. Rockets got a foul. Cochran will reach in with 18 seconds left. Toledo down by five. All right. Right now, it's States up by five with Santiago at the line. Free throw shooting. Right now, Kent State has a chance to close the door. Missed the first. They leave it just to crack open. Rob Senderoff. We will uh, hopefully hear from the victorious head coach after this one. Over 18 seconds away from the one seat. And I think uh, that every. Uh, one who's covered the Mac would tell you uh, the best team throughout the regular season, the Toledo Rockets, down by six. Only 17 seconds left. Moss just threw it away. That is probably going to do it. Yeah, Toledo had poor spacing there. You had Maddox and, and Lorenz in there standing next to each other, and ne neither one thought the ball was coming to them, and they turned it over. Six-point game, reach-in foul, and there the reaction from Giovanni Santiago, the fifth-year senior lead guard for that man, Rob Senderoff. And, well, I think if you're a Kent State fan, you know, number one, you're not used to them being under five, but five, virtually a five other team, 15 and 16, but eight and 10 in the eighth seed in the back, you're not used to that, but you are used to them Performing very well and playing very well here in the MAC tournament in downtown Cleveland. And they've just virtually beat the number one seed in the quarterfinal. It, it, again, things you count on with the Kent State program physicality and attacking the rim. And, you know, we talked about, you know, even though they lost the last ball game, they had some success getting in the inside of that Toledo defense. We're talking about Cameron Davis in the open for that reason. And boy, did he deliver here this evening you know, for this basketball team 26 points. Eight point game, six point game as Dante Maddox went to the hoop. Rockets going to foul one more time, but uh, this one is just two seconds away from being in the win column for that man. Rob Senderoff. And how about the Kent State Golden Flashes? Again, doing damage. And, and, and folks, and I've said it, I'll say it for the third time. The two games this year, Toledo won them both decisively and handily by 16 points and 14 points. Anything but today. What's the Rockets' biggest lead this afternoon? 5-2 uh, to 7-2. At one point, seven it was 7-2. Two two. Start five points. Yep. And 7-2. Look, when you, if you look at this game, you know, Toledo, in Toledo's two wins, Toledo shot 58% from the field and 52% from the field. Today, they're 39% from the field. So shot making wasn't where it normally is. But you got to get that's That's credit to Kent State's defense. Kent State was a little bit more disciplined defensively here this afternoon making Toledo shoot over a walled up defender or or, 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 def, or a guy that was you know st over extended hands and and they didn't foul and it, when it they did it's over they did. in downtown Cleveland and the number one seed has been toppled you can book this one to Rob Senderoff and his gunny get state golden flashes they virtually led this from stem to stern in a 67 to 59 win over the top seed Toledo Rockets. Hmm. Well, give Kent State a lot of credit. You know, they came in here, obviously the underdog, but they didn't believe it. And they came in and they got it done defensively. And then the job offensively by Cameron Davis in that painted area. 26 points to lead the Golden Flashes. We are about to be joined by the victorious uh, head coach, Rob Senderoff of the Kent State Golden Flashes. An extraordinary, virtually led it from start to finish.